been as good to him and that is how good and how gracious our God is amen? amen okay well to get us in the spirit of praise on this morning if you would simply repeat after me make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands serve the Lord with gladness come before his presence with singing know ye that the Lord he is God it is he who hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen, amen. For those of you who are uh, visiting with us on this morning, uh, we want you to know that it is not an accident that you are here at this very moment, at this very time. We are blessed to have you in our presence. You are our special and honored guest. If you have any questions about anything that you see or experience this morning, please do not hesitate uh, to stop and ask. And we only hope and, our, and we only pray that this will not be your last time visiting us here at the Eastside Church of Christ. Uh, we ask that uh, at this time we are going to open up uh, with the word of prayer. Please keep those uh, lifted up that you get the emails about that are going through various trials and tribulations. Uh, those who are just going through some of life's struggles. Uh, those who may be dealing with illness and uh, those who are just, just needing God's guidance. We ask that you keep them all lifted up. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us go to our Father in prayer. To our eternal God and Father. It is once again, Heavenly Father, that we approach our throne of grace as humbly as we know how. Yes. We come before you, Heavenly Father, just thanking you for the chance to be in your presence. We come before you, Heavenly Father, just thanking you for this time that you've allowed us to gather here and worship your name in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for all the blessings, the grace, and the mercy that you have shown the East Side Church of Christ. We come, Heavenly Father, asking that you be with us as we go into this morning's worship service. We ask that you open up our hearts and our minds and our spirits to receive what you would have us to on this morning, Heavenly Father. Be with all those who are struggling, all those who are not here for whatever reason, uh, those who are just needing your help and your guidance. We lift them all up to you. Continually guide this congregation in everything that we do. Forgive us of all of our shortcomings and all of our sins. It is in Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want two wings, two wings, to veil my face. I want two wings, two wings, to veil my feet. I want two wings, two wings, to fly away. And the world can't do me no harm. Oh, Lord, I want two wings, two wings, to veil my face. I want two wings, two wings, to veil my feet. I want two wings, two wings. Most of all, I have to 
never been to heaven, but I've been told. Streets up for heaven, just like gold. And we're gonna move in the room with the Lord. In the room with the Lord. Well, just as soon as my feet strike Zion, we're gonna move on up a little higher. We're gonna put on our robe and glory. Lord knows we're gonna tell our story. How we made it over life's hills and mountains. We're gonna thank the Lord for his healing fountain. And don't you know we're gonna live on an epic Say it again, we're gonna live on an epic One more time, we're gonna live. Come on, he said. As my feet strike Zion, we're gonna move on up a little higher. We're gonna put on my robe and glory. No knows I'm gonna tell my story. How my family made it over hills and mountains. I'm gonna thank the Lord for His healing fountain. And don't you know we're gonna live on a Sing it again, we're gonna live. Time I got a Say man. Amen. I know God's been good to you. I know you can do better than that. I tell you, I, you know God is so good sometimes you don't know whether you want to shout, scream, dance, or, or do what. But on that song, I have to watch myself because it makes me want to do some, some uh, cut, like the old folks say, cut a rug. And y'all don't want to see the preacher do that. No, you don't want to see that again. We are thankful to the Lord that he has blessed us. Uh, I think it was Jeremiah that said in Lamentations 3 and 22, it is because of his mercies that we are not consumed. The reason why you're here today, because God gave us another chance, a chance we really don't deserve, but he gave it to us anyway. How many of us deserve a second chance? I hear people all the time tell me, I'm coming to get mine. I want mine. You couldn't handle yours if God, God gave it to you this morning. Hey Amen. Y'all getting quiet. Come on, y'all. What's the matter this morning? As good as the Lord have been, we ought to be shouting, smiling, and everything else. So, so, so again, I don't know about y'all. I'm like, Gary, you, you might not shout. You might not smile. You might not be happy, but I am. And I ain't going to let nobody stop the goodness of the Lord and working in my life. First Peter, the fifth chapter this morning. First Peter, the fifth chapter. I'm enjoying myself on the outdoors. I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm enjoying myself out here. And in fact, I enjoy every day of my life. Even my bad days are good days because I know somebody having a whole lot worse than I got it. Let me tell y'all something this morning when I woke up, you know, when people uh, are important in your life, when people have played a part in your life that have changed you, that have, have, have caused, sort of shaped your character, you tend to be a whole lot more concerned about those people. So I called home this morning in Louisiana. You know, Lake Charles was just about wiped out. And my friend Gene Hill, I found out that he was 
he had a stroke, him and his brother, so his wife now is taking care. And pray for the, uh, for the family, the Hill family. Uh, the, the, the roof was ripped off the house, and, and you know, when, when, when water comes in, mold comes right along with it. And so they're struggling in that area. Just imagine living in Oklahoma when it's hot, 100 degrees, with no air conditioning. And those people are really suffering, so this little sun should mean nothing to you today. And then I got another call from a friend of mine in Alexandria, Brother Jesse Allen. I'm a fellow preacher, been a friend of my family for over 35 years. And he told me yesterday they were cutting a branch off the tree at his house. And, uh, and an unfortunate thing happened, Brother. They had a brother by the name of uh, John, uh, I think his name is John Spratt, who had became a member 14 years ago that had left the Lord and came back three months later. He said that was the only consolation in that guy's life because what happened yesterday while they were cutting the tree down, part of the tree fell on top of him and crushed him right standing, Jesse was standing right next to him. And so he said, now I got to preach this morning with all of this stuff on my mind, with all these things on my mind. You see, sometimes we don't even know how good we have it. Sometimes we don't realize how God has blessed us and sometimes we ought to be thanking him instead of complaining. And again, I got a call just a few minutes ago. Uh, uh, a lady, she's, she has to be in her 90s. She was a member at the church where I, I, I preached before I came here to Oklahoma. And uh, my wife, was, she, she basically helped to raise my wife. She, she was up in age. One of the brothers said she was so old she had taught Thomas Jefferson in a Bible class. That was just a joke. But, but she died. She passed this morning. And so keep uh, the Bradley family in your prayers. Uh, she had always, she, she was a very strong supporter of the church. So church, what I'm trying to tell us this morning, we need to be thankful. Stop begging God so much and thank him. Because see, a lot of times what we're begging for, we really don't need it. Amen? First Peter, the fifth chapter. First Peter. Peter, when he wrote to the church in Ephesus, he said that the elders who are among you, I exhort. In other words, I'm sending greetings to the elders, and he said, and I'm sending them greetings because I have a personal, a personal liking for elders, a personal love, because I'm an elder myself, as well as a, brother, a, a fellow preacher. He said, and not only that, but I witnessed the suffering of Jesus. I was there when he was crucified. I was there when he turned water into wine. I was there when he raised the dead and healed the sick. I was there. I witnessed these things. And he said to the shepherds at Ephesus, he says, shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as an overseer, not constrained, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but do it eagerly. He said, not as Lords over those entrusted to you. In other words, treat the church like you love it. Treat the church like you care about it. I, try, I like to treat the church like it's my own flesh and blood. Like it's my family. I want to treat you like I want to be treated. Peter said, take a personal interest. He said, and not only that, but be an example to the flock. He said, but when the chief shepherd, when Jesus appear, you'll receive your crown of glory that does not fade away. He said, and you young people, submit yourselves to the elders. And yes, all of you submit yourselves to one another. And when you do it, be humble about it. It's hard sometimes for us to be humble. It's hard sometimes for us to submit. But God is telling us through his word, submit yourself to one another. He said, and God resists the proud, but he give grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he might lift you up in due time. He said, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. He said, but be vigilant and be sober. In other words, don't take it for granted there's an enemy out there. And the enemy is Satan and he's like a lion. He goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. Well, let me tell you something. One thing about the devil, he never quit. He never give up. And that, 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 that amazes me when I hear people say, well, the devil is busy. Well, he wouldn't be the devil if he wasn't busy. We need to be persistent and busy like the devil, but not do the things that the devil do. This morning, for a short period of time, we want to speak on the subject. He'll work it out. 
God will work it out. Whatever you're going through this morning, God will work it out. You know, sometimes we think my stuff that I'm going through and this thing I'm dealing with, nobody knows. Yeah, God knows better than you know. And in fact, God allows us sometimes to go through some stuff. He opened the door. He let the dogs out sometimes so we can understand that he is still in control. Let me tell you something. No one in this parking lot, no one in this world, not even myself, have total control over your life. Sometimes we think, well, I really got it together. And we're, we're trying to fool people thinking, child, I got it going on. No, you don't have it going on. You think you got it going on. Peter thought he had it going on when he told the Lord, Lord, when everybody else forsake you, I'm going to stick with you. No, nah, no, nah, Peter. If I was there knowing me, I would have said, Peter, man, you need to shut that down. Because I know you, Peter. Jesus said, before the cock crow three times, you're going to deny me twice. And it happened just like Jesus said. God will work out whatever is going on in your life. Let me tell you something. We stress out over a whole lot of stuff. And with this COVID-19, it has changed a whole lot of us. I don't know about y'all, but the things that used to worry me, I don't have to let them go. There's some things that's going to go on in your life that you have no control over. You need to let them go. There will be some people that will come in your life. You may want to let them go. Let me tell you something. Whatever you're going through this morning, know this one thing, that God will work it out. The song said, if you call on the Lord in the midst of your storm, he'll work it out. Yeah. But you got to give it to him. You got to, like Peter said, you got to humble yourself. You got to submit yourself if you want God to work it out. See, too many times we want to cast our cares on the Lord, but we don't want to give him all of them. Because we worry about everything. We worry about getting a job. Lord, the pandemic came and took my job. I was two weeks away from retirement. Guess what? God is still working out. People nowadays are, are hurting financially. Hurting physically. Hurting spiritually. And some of us are hurting mentally. But guess what? God can still work it out. Somebody say, if you call on the name of the Lord, he'll work it out. Peter said, cast all your cares on him. And like I said, we worry about a lot of stuff. And a lot of the things that we worry about, we have absolutely no control over. Some of us are still worried about some things that have already happened. Let me tell you something. Lord George, who was the prime minister of England, once said, he said, I've learned at the end of the day to close the gate. There's some things in our lives we need to close the gate. There's some people in our lives that have walked away from us. We need to close the gate on that chapter. We're still worried about whether they're going to come back. Do, do, do they love me? Did I treat them right? What did I do to make it like this? Let me tell you something. Sometimes God puts you in places that you prosper. Amen. But life is always teaching us a lesson. Jesus told his disciples when they were around. You know, it's amazing how the Lord have already told us that he's going to provide for us. How many of us believe that? If you believe that, raise your hand. I believe it. God will give you what you need, but not always what you want. He told his disciples, don't take no thought on tomorrow, Matthew 6, 24, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, or what you're going to wear. And he dropped down to verse 34. He said, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow have its own problems. You see, a lot of times we buy problems. We set up and we get sick because we're worried about what we're going to do on tomorrow. Guess what? God never promised you tomorrow. He said, be concerned about today, today, be that they have its own sufficiency. What are you saying, Brother Jones, that there are some things that we worry about that have already happened? And, and, and it's sort of like taking a two by four and cutting it and then going back, taking the sawdust and cutting the dust. There's no productivity in sawdust. It's like a rocking chair. You can rock all day long. You might feel good, but you ain't going nowhere. Some of our lives are like a rocking chair. I've been living with this man for 14 years, and he's been telling me he was going to marry me, and I'm still rocking. You know what? You need to get out that chair. You need to change your ways. There are some things you're worried about. And let me tell you something. If you worry long enough, you will get sick. Some of us right now, blood pressure is about going through the roof because we're worried about what people think of us. I'm more concerned about what the Lord thinks of me. 
I'm more concerned about my plight when it comes down to heaven. There's some things that have already happened. It's like going home and taking toothpaste and putting it back in the tube. It ain't going to happen. Church, let me tell you something. We worry ourselves, and you know, worrying, when you read the scriptures, the Bible said it comes from the Greek word called merneo, where we get our word marionette, which is a puppet. The devil want to puppet you. He want to control you. If he can keep you worrying about the simple things, the things that we ought to be paying attention to, we never get around to. How we doing, y'all? Some of us are worried about COVID-19. Let me tell you something. You can do all you can and still be careful. Just be careful. If God wants you, he know how to get you. How we doing, y'all? Stop worrying about things that have already happened. Even Teddy Pendergrass said, close the door, turn out the lights. Come on, y'all. That's the past. You can't change the past. But you have today. Today is all you have. Don't mess up today like we did yesterday. That's why the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You got a new, you got a new life now. Yeah, people might judge you by the things you used to do, but how does God look at you? God is telling you, Jesus is telling you, don't worry about it. Cast your cares on me. Stop stressing. Stop complaining. Allow God to heal you. Not only do we worry about things that have already happened, we worry about things that's inevitable. How many of us in here are still six years old? I used to be six, but guess what? Time don't wait on anybody. Some of us are worried about staying. You can't stay young. I don't care how many lies all of them they tell you. When your skin starts to sag, you can put a 55-gallon drum of butter on it, it's still going to sag. You can dye your hair till cloud rolling got no more dye. Your hair going to turn gray. And with some of us, it not only turned gray, but it let loose. Your teeth will become few. Hello, somebody. They might be shining and pretty white now, but guess what? One day, life gonna change you. Look at y'all as good as y'all looking. Skin used to be smooth like a peach. Some of us are getting wrinkled like a prune now. You can't change the process of age. You're gonna age, you're gonna die. I sat down every day and think about what David said in Psalm 90 and verse 12. He said, Lord, teach me to number my days. Why, Jones? Because it, it, after a while, I got I to gotta leave. I got to leave here. I can't stay here. God have already told me. We sing that song. I want to move into the room with the Lord. Well, you got to leave here to go to the room. Some of us want to leave, but we don't want to leave. Some of us want the crown, but we don't want to bear the cross. What are you saying? God have already told us I'm going to take care of you, but you got to let loose and let God. Stop stressing over the things that you don't have no control over. Some of our young folk now, they want to be millionaires. Maybe that's not in God's plan. God said, I have some plans for you, Jeremiah 29 and 11, and those plans may not to make you rich, but you're going to prosper. He'll work it out. He'll work it out. We used to sing a song, heaven is looking down on me. And in that song, it, it, it says, when my friends do me wrong, I shake it off and I move on. That was a time in my life I used to really worry about whether people love me. And I read John 15. What Jesus said, if the world hated me first, you know it's going to hate you. Some of us go to work looking all out the corner of our eyes to see if the co-workers are talking about me. Guess what? When you start living right, they're really going to talk about you. And when they find out that you're supposed to be a Christian and you ain't living like a Christian author, or they really going to talk about you today. Amen. God said, I'll take care of you. No matter what your situation is today, Eastside, no matter what you're going through, and only God knows what you're going through. Only God knows the hurts and the depth of your feelings. But all we can say to you is let him work it out. 
Because let me tell you something. Brother Jones can give you words of comfort, but Jesus can give you the ultimate comfort. Brother Jones go through stuff just like everybody else. And I'm going to say this, and I hope you take this in the right spirit. But I got a friend that's a psychiatrist. And every once in a while, I let him in my head. Amen? Some of us need to let somebody in our head that's qualified to help us. Is Brother Jones crazy? Nope. I can give you the word, but he got knowledge. And every once in a while, it take other people that sees us better than we see ourselves to help us to understand ourselves. Don't be afraid to have somebody close to you that will tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. Husband, don't be afraid to tell the wife, honey, so and so, this is the way it should be. And wives, don't be so to where you can't take it. Boy, I tell you, during this pandemic, we are so close to one another in the house. We can just about hear one another's heartbeat because we ain't going nowhere. And we're getting to learn some things that we have been together 40, 50, 60 years. We're learning some new things. But I've learned this one thing about the Lord. He's the one that's been working on me and my wife all these years. And every day I said, Lord, work on me because I need some fixing. I need you to help me. I need you to keep me humble. I need you to tell me and speak to my spirit. Every once in a while, I have to get off by myself and let God work on me. How we doing today, y'all? All of us need fixing out here today. All of us in here got some, got some issues today. You might look good on the outside, but the issues is on the inside. Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 23, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it all the issues of life. You ever sit down sometime and some crazy thoughts go running through your head? Come on, y'all. I know I'm not the only one in here. And you go to saying to yourself, no, that ain't nothing but the devil talking. You come to the church building and somebody don't speak to you and you go to thinking, what did I do? Sometimes you may not be the problem. You may be the solution to the problem. See, everybody in this world has one thing in common. And that is we all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10, and we're going to receive the things that we have done in this body. Let me tell you all something. It's going to be a day amongst all days. And the thing about that is Jesus have already told us, while you're living in this life, I'll take care of you. I will carry you. And in fact, Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? You can believe in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. I'm glad it's many. That way can't nobody take mine. But let me tell you something. You can mess your reservations up pretty good in this life. He said, I'm going to go away to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I'm coming again. Let me tell you something. I don't care what nobody say, but Jesus is coming back. And he's sure enough coming back. And when he come back, he won't be sending no Instagram. No text message. No signs. You know, people talking about, well, you know, it's walls and rumors. Folk been killing folk all, for, ever since time started. When Jesus come back. The Bible said only God knows. Don't try to second guess God. The scripture said... If we, ex if we humble ourselves and submit to God, he will lift us up in due time. Church, I don't know about y'all, but I've been down long enough. And I need God to lift me. On the day of judgment, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'm going to draw all men unto me. I want to be one of those men that God draw. I want to be one of those men that Jesus said, well done thou good and faithful servant. But I cannot be pleasing to God if I'm allowing Satan to use me to worry my life away. There's some things that we must let go so God can speak to us. You, 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 can't, you can't hear God's voice when your head is full of hatred and your heart is full of hatred and envy and jealousy. You can't let, you, you, God cannot speak to you when you have complacency going on in your life. Let me tell you something. I'm so thankful to the Lord. I don't even drink a cup of coffee without thanking the Lord. Put my splendor in my coffee. Every time I have one splendor, thank you, Lord. Two splendors, thank you, Lord. Guess what? God didn't have to do anything for me. Okay. 
It may sound simple to you, but what's important to me, you, you, you don't even understand it. We sang the song, you don't know what he done for me. Gave me the victory. See, if you would have knew me about 50 years ago, you wouldn't have liked me. You know why? Because I didn't even like me myself. I had to change. I knew I was going down a bad road. Look at your life this morning. Look at all the good God has done in your life. Watch how God can change your life. But the thing about it, you got to submit your life. And you got to give it all to God. You got to give it all up. If you're here this morning as a child of God, and you have not surrendered your life totally to God. See, it's easy to say that, I, that God is the head of my life. But let me tell you something about a head. It controls the body. From the neck on down. If Jesus don't have control in our decision making, we have some dire consequences to deal with. Let me encourage every one of us today before we leave off this pavement, off this concrete, off this asphalt, that we look at ourselves. Don't look at your situation. Look at yourself. Because one thing I've learned about situations, we determine the situation. It don't determine who we are. Amen. Amen. We don't allow things going around us to shape our character. Because if we are children of God, things don't control us. God controls us. You might be out here this morning where that don't have a dime in your pocket. But guess what? If you got joy in your heart, Amen. it'll be the pocket full of money any day. Amen. Some of us got a whole lot of money, but we ain't got no joy to go with it. Amen. Oh, we used to sing the song, as long as I got shoes on my feet. Something for my children. Everything is going to be all right. Stop worrying about that car you just bought and you can't afford it, man. Because guess what? One day you're going to leave it to somebody else. But if I knew he was in my car, some of us would roll over in my grave. How we doing, y'all? God has been good. I don't know about y'all. Somebody said, Brother Jones, you be sweating. Let me tell you something. I'm thankful to be sweating. Somebody can't sweat. I'm thankful to have a bad knee because somebody wish they had a knee. Be thankful for the small things. Amen. Amen. If you're here today, make the best of today. Yeah, COVID-19 is here, but guess what? I serve a God that's bigger than him. And guess what? He control it if he want to. He can stop it right now if he want to. But it may not be in the cards. We got to learn to live life to its fullest. Uh, see, see, when I go to the store, if nobody else have a mask on, I got mine. Now, if you, want, if you want to catch it, go ahead on. Help yourself. But, but I'm going to keep it clean and go home to Sister Jones. And we're going to keep it clean. And we're going to wait and watch till Jesus come. Charles, let me tell you something. I, 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 I am so glad that I found the Lord. So glad that I was able to see the error of my way. I was not focusing on what other people were doing. I had to look at me. Let me tell you, young folks, something. I was a hypocrite. Well, I was playing with God. But I had to come clean with God because you know what? I couldn't blame what I was doing on nobody but me. Yeah, I was, I was wearing the title, but I wasn't living the life. Come on. All right. See, it's good to come out here and let folk know that you represent Christ. Yeah, yeah. But how do you represent him when you leave this property? Help me, preacher. Help me. It's easy to tell people I'm saved, but what about when the situation come up and you have to show your safeness? When you're pushed to a point to where you want to say something, and you don't have no filter. Yeah, we got some cussing Christians. I know because I've been cussed out by some of them. We need to change. We need to let God help us. My mouth, let me tell y'all something. You think God had to clean Isaiah's mouth up? Well. He'll work it out. I know he will. You're looking at somebody God worked on and still working on, and every day I ask him to work on, and you know, sometimes I feel like God got to do a little overtime on me. I say like David, Lord, put a guard over my mouth. Because if there's anything that's going to get us in trouble, it's going to be your mouth. It's going to be your mouth. Because there are times when we don't know when to just leave it alone and walk on away from it. How we doing? See something, you got to say something. 
Come on, y'all. Y'all y'all smiling like somebody said something this week. Oh, I can't stand them Republicans. You got to love them whether you like them or not. Yes, sir. You got to love what's going on in the White House. Because what did it do to make your house black? Remember, we're children of God. We got to pray for people. But if we're not in the position, if God is not working on me, I can't pray for you. How we doing, y'all? I think I've said enough. Might have said too much, but that's all right. That's all right. If you're here today and you, you stand in need of prayer, you have fallen, you have what the old folk just call backslid away from God. You have fallen away from the truth. And you need to change your life. You know, I hear preachers talking about repent. Just change. Stop doing what you're doing and do what's right. Amen. Amen. If you're stealing, stop stealing and stop being honest and work. Whatever you do, make sure that you live your life every day so God can use you. Christian, if you're here today and you have fallen short, you need to repent of your sins and ask God to reinstate you in his graces. If you're here today and you are not a child of God and you have not given God your life, this is your day. This is your day. You've heard the word Romans 10, 17, so that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You should believe in God based upon the word that you have heard. I hope you believe what you have heard. Believing alone ain't going to get it. James said in James, I think 2.19, he said the devil believed and he trembled. Does that make him safe? No, son, no, ma'am. Believing alone is not going to get it. You hearing the word and you hear and believe in what you've heard should cause you to act upon what you have heard. Yeah. Right. That's what repentance is. The change of heart and mind, Isaiah 55, verse 7 through 9, Luke 13 and 3, Acts 22. And not only that, confessing Christ. Confession is an acknowledgement that I need something. And if it's ever we, anything that we need in this life, we need the Lord. Amen. You need the Lord. I, I, you know, I, had a, I had a thing going on the other day. I was talking to some people and I was telling them, there's two things in this life you're going to need. Is that Jesus. Notice the priority I put them in. Jesus yeah. and life insurance. Because when you die, there's somebody going to have to bury you. But you need to confess him while you're living in this life. Matthew 10, 32 and 33. And not only confess him, but through an act of obedience through faith, be baptized in water for the remission of sins. You won't see nothing in the water, but your act of obedience through faith is what God is looking for. Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he shall in no wise enter the kingdom of heaven. He'll work it out for you. He've already worked it out. He's standing at the door, Revelation 3 and 20. He said, I stand at the door and knock, and if any man will open up, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Jesus has been standing at the door of all of our hearts, waiting on us Amen. to repent of our sins, Amen. to confess them, to be baptized. Those of us that are not baptized, you need to be baptized. You need to be saved. First Peter 3 and 21, the Bible said that the light figure went out to even baptism, thus also now saves us. He'll work it out. Yes, man. This lesson is yours. While together we stand and sing a song of encouragement. Why don't you come? Uh, verses 11, uh, 23 through 30. Uh, but he, he reminds us at the end of that passage that he who eateth and drinketh uh, in an unworthy manner does so damnation to himself. So we ask that as you partake of the Lord's broken body and his shed blood, uh, that you do so with clean hands uh, and pure heart. Let's pray. Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you again for this day, for this opportunity to be here, uh, to commune, uh, to worship. And we're thankful for the sacrifice of Jesus. And we're thankful uh, for, not only for the cross, but uh, for the resurrection. And it's that we remember on, on today. And may we, uh, Lord, as we take, that we do so with clean hands and pure hearts. It's our prayer in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Search all over, couldn't find, couldn't find nobody. 
During this portion of the worship service, we as Christians are given an opportunity to give back a portion of what God has so richly given us. We do this on the first day of the week in accordance with 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verses 1 and 2. In the attitude that we, sh we have when we give, we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verses 6 and 7. And the Bible states, But this I say, he who soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he who soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as it purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of a necessity, for God loveth the cheerful giver. Let us pray. Dear blessed and heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you now just thanking you for all your many blessings. Just thank you for all those things that you so richly given us, your mercy, your grace, your kindness, your love. Lord, we just thank you for again for all those blessings you so richly bless us with, uh, especially those that we often take for granted. Lord, we pray now that as we take this time to give back, that everyone will have the the attitude that you expressed in Second Corinthians, that we will give in a manner that will be pleasing and acceptable in your sight, and that when we give, we give in a cheerful manner and not out of uh, obligation. Lord, we pray that uh, the pro the proceeds that we receive, we pray that the leadership will take these proceeds and and use them in, in, in a way that will uplift your kingdom. Amen. Uh, continue to watch over us and keep us. And in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, we just need to pray for one another and uh, pray that the Lord will work it all out. He will work it out. Amen. Amen. All right, all right. For those who are uh, new to this, we just, just listen to what I have to say. Shout it out as I read along, just like everybody else is going to shout it out. Here we go. And it goes, Father. Help us this week in everything that we do to allow our light to shine so that others may see your good works. Help us to grow together as one family in one faith, sharing one focus. In Jesus' name, amen.